Hi guys. Um, welcome back. It's hasn't been too long since I last talked to you guys. I think it's been just about a week. So pretty quick turnaround time if I do say so myself. Um, so my name is Melanie, also known as Cozy Cardigans on Instagram and on Ravelry. I am the owner and dyer for Big Little Yarn Co. And you can find me on biglittleyarn.com or on um, Instagram as Big Little Yarn Co. So, welcome everybody. Um, I wanted to make a new video because I am having a shop update with new colorways and a little bit of a restock on the old one so I wanted to tell you all about that. Um, that'll be more towards the end though. Um, for those of you who are new, I am currently residing in Las Vegas, Nevada in the US. Um, I do own a home in Osaka, Japan that I cannot get to right now because of the current situation. And so, yeah, I'm here with my in-laws. They've very much, very kindly opened up their home to me and my husband, their son. So I'm staying here for now and it is super hot. I am a little sweaty in this knit t-shirt, but I'm going to bear with it. Um, Today's really hot, but not as hot as last week. I think last time I talked to you all, it was like 110. And right now it is nice 104 degrees outside. So staying inside all day. I do have to ship some stuff out for the shop, but after that, I'm staying inside. So first, let's see. Let me start with the works in progress. I don't have any finished objects. Oh, but I'll talk about this one. So. Um, I showed you this last week, but I wasn't wearing it. I was wearing my Bellicor crop last week, but this is the um, Cozy Classic Light by Jesse, Jesse Maid. Um, and by the way, I'll link all the info about all the projects and stuff down in the description box if you want to click through anything. So um, yeah, so this is the Cozy Classic Light. So this is the fingering weight version of the Cozy Classic Raglan by Jessie Maid. So this is a test knit, so the pattern still hasn't been released just yet. Um, but I mean, I'll probably let you know when she does, or you could go onto her Instagram to get all her info for that. So this is knit up with fingering weight versus the DK weight for the original Cozy cozy classic raglan so fingering weight um i pretty much used up an entire skein i think i knit the size 2 version and it is the cropped short sleeve version and i used an entire skein of the pb and j colorway that i have so this if you were wondering how peanut butter and jelly knits up this is how it knits up and i love so i didn't um I didn't alter, alternate the skeins, I just used one entire skein and just let it pool however it liked. And I really like how it turned out. Um, you could tell that there's less pulling on the top because of the raglan increases. And she has these, um, I don't know if you could see, it's kind of hard to tell. I'll probably, maybe I'll put a picture up. Um, oh, didn't notice that my camera had a thing. Anyway, so... Um, yeah, so I don't think you could tell the raised raglan increases that she has, but they're really pretty. I'll put a picture up so you could see what I'm talking about. But um, so because of that, there's not as much pulling up top than there is on the bottom where it's just straight stockinette. And a um, couple of mods, I guess I'll just talk about it again. A um, couple of mods, I one, increased the length by about an inch. Um, before I started the ribbing on the bottom and also in the pattern she has a couple of um, waist decrease options for your own choosing so option one 
I don't remember which one was option one and option two, but one option was to do waist decreases, so, um, which is what I did. I did the waist decreases because my, my bust is a little larger than my actual waist. I wanted it to be a little more tight fitting, so I did do the waist decreases that she recommended. And then also, if you wanted a more flowier top, so something that like billowed out a little bit more, you could, um, opt for no decreases and that'll give you a nice flowy crop top so i think i'll do that next time um i do like it fitted but it would be nice to have a billowy crop top and another mod that i unintentionally had to do was because i ran out of an entire skein when i finished the body and for the sleeves it's just um you don't knit any stockinette to increase the sleeves for the sh the short sleeve version unless you want to and you want to have like a half sleeve or three quarter sleeves then obviously you would have to knit more sleeve but for me i just needed this ribbing part and because i ran out and i didn't want to really break into another skein of peanut butter and jelly just for the ribbing part i just used some leftover of the bramble and just knit contrasting sleeves and i think it worked out really well. I was kind of worried about it being a bit too like out there or too contrasty compared to the peanut butter and jelly but I think it kind of melts together pretty well. So yeah let me stand up. So this is pretty cropped. My belly button's like all the way here but I do wear these high-waisted pants a lot so there's only like about I don't know a couple inches of skin showing. So yeah. That's how it is, and so so she does have the Cozy Classic Raglan pattern already out, and that's the DK weight version. This is, again, the fingering weight version, and you have to probably wait another, maybe another month or so before the final pattern comes out, but yeah, it's a really great fingering weight, um, classic sweater pattern to have, especially because she has, um, instructions for the short sleeves and long sleeves and cropped and uncropped so it's just like an all-in-one pattern that you could just use over and over again which I really love so yeah this is what I'm wearing not a fresh finished object but first time I'm wearing it on camera other than like pictures I've taken so that's the only thing that I have finished um so a couple of things I have been working on I have Let's see, so I'm almost done with another test knit that I've been doing. It's called the Tsunagu Pullover by Liriko, and she's Hand Knit Life on Instagram. So this is her new pullover pattern. It's called the Tsunagu Pullover. It's got these really nice, like, geometric colorwork yoke. And then it's just regular stockinette, and then on the bottom, there's like the same kind of motif right before the ribbing and then also right before the ribbing for the sleeves. So this is a test knit so the pattern has not come out yet and I don't think it'll come out for maybe another couple months. So sorry I'm not sure if you could hear a rumbling but it's the garage. So. I was trying to finish this before I was able to, or before I sat down, but I just couldn't do it and this is the only time I could film, so whatever. I'll show you guys next time. A nice blocked one next time. So I have, last time I talked to you, I think I just finished the body and now I'm just finished with the sleeve. So I'm at the point where I start the little color work bit here before I start the ribbing. So I'm like so close to finishing, but I fell asleep while I was working on it last night, so whatever. But I love it so much. I tried it on the other day and oh, this pattern is just so, it's so simple and clean, but it was really fun to knit. It was really Easy, it was an easy, like very intuitive color work pattern, so I didn't really have to look at the pattern too much. I could like watch shows while I was knitting it, and it was really good. Um, 
For the colors, the green, the bluish green is Lagoon. And then again, this brownish bit is Bramble, which is the same thing I used here. And I think it works out really well. It kind of reminds me of trees and tree branches. And I really like that. And yeah, some mods. Um, made the sleeve shorter and the body shorter as per usual because I'm a short person and my torso and arms are very short. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Everything else I knit to pattern, obviously because one, it's a test knit so I kind of have to, but also everything just fit really nicely so I didn't really need to change anything at all. Um, yeah, so I'm almost done with this. Can't wait to show you guys the finished object. Yeah, can't wait for fall. It's way too hot. It in, in Las Vegas, it does get really cold for a little bit. Um, like last year, it snowed for a couple days. Very weird. You don't think about that when you're living in a desert, but it does happen. So if it does happen again this year, I'm ready for it. But yeah, so an almost finished object. This and then... I started another test knit, so I've just been doing a lot of test knits lately. I've just been seeing a lot of good new designs that I really want to cast on, so... This is the Emery... I think that's how you pronounce it. Emery Shawl by Shapiro Knits. Um, she, her name is Patricia, but she's Shapiro Knits on Instagram. And this is the Emery Shawl. It's a three-colored asymmetrical shawl. I finished the first color and then there's these bobbles that come in. This is the third color. So first color I'm using is Rust and the base I'm using is the Peruvian Wool Base. It's a non-super wash base that I have and it's up so good in this. And then so you knit with, so there's three different colors. Um, color one and then you use color three for the bobbles so that it pops against the first color and then color two I am using so what I'm knitting right now is lichen on the Peruvian wool and you could like barely see it right now maybe you could see the stitches but I can't wait to see how the colors kind of melt together so there's a some lighter green I'm not sure if you could see there's some lighter green here, some gold over here. It's not very fo focusing very well right now, but yeah, I can't wait to see how it looks in garter stitch. And it's all garter stitch, very simple, meditative. And I love these little baubles that come along the way. So after section two, there's section three. And section three uses Lagoon which I don't know, I've just been really liking how Lagoon looks with everything. So it's kind of like color blocked, three colored shawl. Um, slowly working on this. It's just nice garter stitch. There's some eyelet stitches here, some bobbles, and it'll be just a nice squishy shawl for when it does get cold. And if it doesn't, I'll just wear it in the AC anyways. So very fun. I haven't knit a shawl in a while, and I haven't knit bobbles in a while. I was kind of like, I like the look of the bobbles on this shawl a lot, which is why I decided to test knit it, but I'm not a bobbly person in general. But man, I love making them. They're so satisfying to knit. Just having these little dots, just so, so fun. So I'm kind of thinking maybe I should knit some a sweater with some baubles on it too. Something not too bobbly, but I would like to knit some baubles on a sweater. So yeah, it's been really fun. Um, one thing that she recommended in her pattern is to make a yarn over stitch at the increased edge. So when you knit shawls, if you haven't knit one before, you do have an increase edge, which is here. So 
you don't really increase on just one end, you increase on this edge here, and then you decrease on this edge here, and it kind of makes this, it's really hard to show you when it's not blocked, but this uneven triangle shape, and then it kind of just grows into a shawl as you go. So before I've had, I've had trouble with the increase edge being too tight um, when you block it out because you increase, you make increases every single row. Well, so far, you make increases every single row and only dig, only decrease every other row. And because of that, the tension, I guess, on the increase side gets very tight and so when you end up blocking it it's very difficult to kind of spread it out into the proper triangle shape that it's meant to be in and it kind of just kind of curls around itself so I've had trouble with that before when I was knitting maybe it was the find your fade I'm not sure it was a while back but I know I've had trouble blocking shawls before but she recommended to do yarn overs on the increase side and to just drop the yarn overs when you come back around to um so um, let me show you what I mean so when you start off you knit one yarn over knit all the way across and then when you're knitting back because you've made that extra yarn over that isn't necessarily supposed to be there you just drop it and then continue on as before does that make sense? So you yarn over and then you drop, yarn over on the right side, drop it on the wrong side pretty much so that you do have the current correct amount of stitches as called for in the pattern. That way you can make this like, I don't know if you could tell, but it stretches a lot better. And at first I was kind of worried that I was making these holes. I'm not sure if you could see it, but I realized that when you do stretch it out to block it, it does kind of disappear when you stretch it out like that. And I, even if it kind of bounces back, I don't really mind the holes anyways. But I thought that was a really great tip if you were having trouble with curled shawl edges to do a yarn over, like a dropped yarn over selvage edge. I don't even know what you call it, but yeah, I thought it was a great tip to have. It made me feel a lot better about, um, having to block it after this because um well at first I didn't know what she really meant because I've never done it before and so I could tell that like the beginning so you cast on at this little bit so I could tell from at the beginning it's a bit tight when I try to pull it and it kind of does curl a little bit at the top but then when I started to do it it definitely relaxed a bit more and it did straighten out really nicely so yeah just a little little tip for shawl knitting if you didn't know about it but yeah this is the again this is the emery shawl by Shapira Knits hopefully I'll have the second part done by the time I talk to you next time and then you can see how the uh, lichen knits up I'm really excited for it so one more knitting work in progress is so I didn't really work on it too much but I thought I'd show you anyways is my merit cardigan merit cardigan um so I did a little bit of the color work so when I talked to you before I think I've only had the ribbing done I got this much done something I mean better than nothing right so I'm using Nipix palette yarn for this. It's like my, not scraps, but yeah, leftovers that I've had from other projects. And so I'm just making a thick cozy cardigan that I have no need for right now. But I'm loving the color work so far. I just love working on color work. So this is my current color work project. So this is going, I mean, I've kind of been working more on the test knits, so this has been a little bit on the back burner, but I've been working on it now and again, and it's still fun. And thought I'd show you the little 
well like barely an inch of knitting that I did on this thing so yeah that's a thing it's going it's going and another thing that I've been working on that's not knitting is some spinning so I haven't touched my spinning wheel in a while and I thought I was in like a spinning wheel slump but I think it might be because of that um, if you've been watching my other previous videos, you know that I've been working on a two-ply green and brown kind of yarn for, um, well, originally it was going to be a weekender. I've already started knitting the weekender. I haven't frogged it yet. I'm still thinking about it, but I'm kind of wondering if I should make something else out of it because, yeah, I don't know if I'm liking how it's going to look on a weekender. In my head it looked really good, but when I knit it, I'm like, I don't know. But anyways, I'll think about them some more later. But I thought I was in a spinning slump because of it. Or I thought I was in a spinning slump, and then I realized it's because of that project. So I decided to just put that aside for now. Let it sit. It's okay if it sits. It's fine. It's not going to go anywhere. So I decided to start spinning. Just, um, just like a meditative not thinking too hard kind of spinning project so right so right now I only have this much but I'm trying to spin up this um, fin wool fiber it's 100% fin wool from Three Waters Farm they're like one of my favorite fiber dyed fiber companies out there and it's in the colorway bright synopsis but this is how it looks like in a braid so it's like a nice sun, dark, sunsetty kind of color. Very fun. There's some orange down there, but you can see it's like uh, maybe like 22 WPI singles, maybe. I'm just kind of letting it spin how it wants to spin, not thinking too hard about it at all. But I'm planning to make it a two-ply yarn using this mystery wool that I had in my stash. So about a year ago, I bought this huge stash of fiber from this lady near LA. And she, her husband was selling it. He didn't know what was in there. Um, and some of the stuff was not labeled. So I have no idea what this is. I just, I've weighed in, there's 86 grams. So I know I'll have a bit extra of the fin, but that's okay, I'll just apply it onto itself. So this is really soft. I'm, I want to say it's like a merino blend or something, but it's like this dark blue green fiber. And I think it would look really nicely with these two applied together, especially because there's like pops of gray and yellow and orange. And then it, it'll kind of blend together when it comes to this green bluish part here. So I think that'll be a nice two ply yarn that I could just play with. So. I'm just letting this one be, not thinking too hard about it, because the other fiber project I was um, kind of being a little more careful about it, just because I did, um, because I did knit, or I did wash if, like, I made it from the fleece to the yarn, so I was kind of more careful about it. Um... It was like a dirty fleece, I washed it, I cleaned it, it was like my baby. And so now it is too much of a baby and I need to let it go and work on something else because it's kind of killing my spinning mojo. And I know I'll get back to it like maybe after I finish this yarn, but I just needed to finish a spinning project because that has taken me forever. So I've been working on that. Um... Yeah, that's all my works in progress. Not super a lot to show you, but yeah, there it is. So now I'm going to go ahead and talk about the stuff that's coming in for the new shop update. Um, the shop update will be on Sunday, August 30th at 11 a.m. PDT. So if you have a calendar or an alarm set up, that'd be good because I've only have... I only have small amounts of each colorway to sell, I think. Well, anyways, I'll talk about it as I go through them all. 
but as you know a lot of the yarn from the supplier that a lot of the yarn dyers get their yarn from uh, the supply has been very limited so gotta make do with what you got so this is what I got so I keep saying so sorry here is what I have um, first off I am doing a restock of the tonals so let me show you I think most of the tonals in the um, superwash fingering base. So all of these are going to be on superwash merino nylon fingering base because that is what I have and um, it has so far been the most popular base so that is what I was able to snag before the supplier sold out. So first off the tonals I'm doing a restock of. These are all, these all have been available um, before in the from the last update but some of them have sold out some of them I think I still have like one or two left but anyways I'm adding four more in each color so this is strawberry jam which sold out pretty quickly everyone really liked this one I love this one honestly it looks like strawberry jam and then there's rust another popular one nice and rusty good neutral and here's Bramble, which has been really popular. And it's like, it looks, it's very hard to place. It's purpley brown is the best I could do with it. So yeah, again, this this sleeve part here. Another that. She's so, everyone's favorite. It's really nice dark lavender purpley color. And then this is the Lagoon, and it's like a nice blue-green, sea-green kind of color. So all of that will be back in stock um, during the update. So old colors, but everyone still loves them, so putting them back in. And now, so new colors. I will have a restock of all the older colors too. The Umeboshi, Patina, California Coast, um, Lichen, and Peanut Butter and Jelly. So all of that will also have a little bump of stock going in. So if you missed it last time, you will be able to get some more. And so let me introduce you to all the new colorways. So first off, let me introduce you to Sangria. So Sangria is this really nice, very autumnal colorway. It has some like dark magenta, royal purple, this light yellowy beige, some browns. It's got some speckles, so very autumnal. And I named it Sangria because if you have not read my Instagram post about it, I did a little about me Instagram post a while back, but one fun fact about me is that I'm very allergic to alcohol. And yeah, I know, sad tear crying emoji, but um, so since I'm allergic to alcohol, I can't have any alcohol. Obviously, I'm very allergic. And sangria happens to be the last drink that I was able to enjoy before I realized that I was severely allergic to it. So this is in celebration of my, not in celebration, but more of I'm allergic but I could still enjoy it. So this is Sangria in yarn form. So I will have this in the Superwash Merino Nylon Sock. And also, I did have some Superwash Merino uh, worsted base left, so I did dye up a few different colorways because I was a little limited on that. So one of them is in Sangria, and it looks so good in 100% Merino Superwash. So I'll have these up in the shop. This is Sangria again. And then the second colorway, ooh, all the ends are out and about, but the second colorway is called Matsuri. 
And Matsuri means festival in Japanese. And I made this to celebrate. I used to visit every year, every summer, I would visit Japan to visit my family members. And one of the highlights of the trip would always be the Obon Matsuri. And um, we're, it's this summer festival that happens every year. And this year it was canceled for obvious reasons. And I am not in Japan right now. I'm in Las Vegas, so I can't go anyways. But um, I just wanted to celebrate that. And it's like those hot summer nights, you know, where you're just really enjoying yourself. And there's like fireworks and festival lights. And it just captures all of those emotions for me in one nice colorway. So there's these really nice swaths of dark blue and purple and green. And then there's, let me see if it'll, some speckling. And then the top part has some black, some grays, and then this nice like reddish orange color. So I really like this one. This one will also have, we'll also have it in the Superwash Merino Worsted Base. So this is its little companion. It looks so good in the worsted too. You could really see the speckling on here. So this is Matsuri, another colorway that's going to be available. And then one colorway that was super popular when I posted it on Instagram is this Yume colorway. And Yume means dream in Japanese. And it really just looks like I named it because it just looks like a happy dream. So it's got so many different colors on it. It's this nice pastel rainbow color. It would look so good in a sweater or even a pair of socks. So this one I'm only going to have in the um, Superwash Merino Nylon Sock Base, but I will have a little bit more of the quantity in stock just in case. Um, but the thing is, is that because of how it is dyed, the skeins itself look very different from each other. It's not a very consistent kind of colorway. So if you were to make a sweater out of it, I do recommend alternating skeins just to get a mix of everything. I really, I personally really love that fact where hand dyed yarn just looks different for each skein in general even if it does look very close so anyways i would have recommended anybody to alternate skeins in any colorway in general anyways but so for the listing for the yume i've made it so you could choose which skein you want so you'll have to select which skein um that you'd like to add to your cart before you add it to your cart just because things look a little different some of them are more pink, some of them are more purple, some of them are more blue, and I just wanted to make sure everybody got what they wanted. So there is that. So this is Yume. And then this one, this happy yellow one, is called Himawari. And I made this in honor of my grandpa who owned or who had a huge garden when I was growing up. He was a big, um, he was super big on gardening. He loved um, growing his own vegetables and fruits. And he also loved, his favorite thing to grow was Himawari. And so there was always like a big, like, I don't know what you call that, a bush a section of Himawari or sunflowers. Did I say that? It I keep saying Himawari. Himawari means sunflowers. But he had a big section of sunflowers in his garden all the time and they would spring up every summer and they're always looking super happy, super bright and yellow. So this is that to honor his garden and his sunflowers. So including the happy sunflower yellow, I've also included some greens and some browns, like a summer, happy summer garden kind of vibe. Um, I really like this. It's very happy. I 
would I would love to make socks or even like a striped stri striped sweater out of this. Anyways, it's a really cute yellow color. So this one will also be available in the Superwash Merino Nylon Sock Base. And then another one. So this is one of my favorites. Is uh, faded denim. So it's this nice denim blue indigo blue kind of color the pale what looks to be white spots here are actually a bit more yellow i don't know if you could kind of tell like comparing it to the wall behind me that it has a bit more of a yellow tone to it and then there's also bits of like green but it's mostly this nice faded indigo color and this I made this because honestly I love that indigo blue kind of color and what I love most about it is when it's on denim and I feel like that kind of blue just goes with anything so I wanted to make that so this is faded denim and I'm going to have that in this um, Superwash Merino Worsted as well. So this is just like a great fun basic. Like it's not basic because obviously it's not all one solid color but I think it's a really great colorway to have and no matter what you make it with, with it whether it's like a sweater or a cardigan or socks it's just gonna look good with anything. It'll just be a great basic to put on. Just like a pair of jeans. So that is faded denim. And then last but not least, this is Komorebi. And um, it's this very speckled, I speckled fied this like crazy because, let me explain. So Komorebi is a Japanese word that is not, that doesn't have a direct translation in the English language. So komorebi means, describe, not describes, is the light that shines through leaves. So when you're say inside a forest and there's light shining through leaves, that's what komorebi is. So as a Japanese American, I've had so many times where there's like one translation in one language and then it doesn't really translate directly into the other and so I've had so many times where I've had trouble with that as a bilingual speaker and so I thought it would be a really cool way to just translate a word through color. So this is kind of what it reminds me it reminds me of the sunlight that goes through that shines through leaves during a sunny day so there's like a bit of yellow obviously the leafy green and it's just a lighter color than like just a solid green would be if it was just describing the leaves of a tree i would say because it does have that sunshiny glow to it but yeah this is Komorebi and it will be a shop update. So that's the last color. So there are going to be, let me just pick everything back up real quick. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there will be six new colorways going into the shop this Sunday. Um, I hope you guys all like it um it's hard to it's hard to judge for myself whether or not it's going to be a good colorway or not because i honestly i only dye things that i like so i obviously really love all these colorways i just can't tell if you all will but anyways you guys are lovely people i'm, I'm sure you all have something nice to say about it but anyways so let me just go through it one more time um Himawari or sunflower and then faded denim 
and Matsuri or festival. And there's Yume or dream. And then Komorebi, which is very hard to describe, but it's the light going through the leaves and trees. And then Sangria, which is self explanatory, I believe. And so, yeah, that's all I got for you guys this week. Please let me know if you have any questions. Um, please do sign up for the newsletter if you haven't done so already because I do put links to all the listings beforehand um, so that way when they do go up at 11 a.m. and then I'll send you, sorry, let me start over. If you haven't signed up for the newsletter, I recommend you do so because I make the newsletter in a way where I send it beforehand with all the links attached so that you could plan out your purchase, figure out what you want to get, and so that when 11 a.m. does come around, you could just click through the links, get whatever you need, and check out before anyone tries to take anything from you. So I do recommend that if you were planning to grab a certain colorway because it is, again, a little limited, um, I will hopefully do another update soon so that if you do happen to end up missing anything, I can get that for you as soon as possible. Um, but yeah, newsletter is probably the best way to plan out what you need to get and all the links will be there so it'll be super easy. Um, I think that's about it. Thanks for hearing me ramble. I feel like this was pretty rambly. Um, let me know if you are looking for any of these colorways in a different base maybe because I do only have those two bases for this update. Um, it has been a little difficult getting a lot of the bases just because the supply has been low because of the pandemic but if you do let me know which bases you want beforehand I could try to kind of finagle some over maybe um but yeah comment below on what your favorite colorway is maybe or if you liked any of them please let me know because I'm not sure um if you have a favorite or if you are looking for any other colors maybe I don't know or to just say hi um yeah that's about it thanks for watching and I hope to see you on Sunday during the shop update Mm, yeah. All right. See you guys.